In May of 2010, people were gathering together in cinemas to see the release of Marvel's sequel to the first Iron Man movie. But what caught a lot of people's attention wasn't what was in the movie, but rather what was played before it. A trailer for a movie titled Super 8, which featured a vehicle driving straight into a train that was travelling from Area 51. The final shot is a close-up of a Super 8 camera lens, with strange markings flying by really fast in the style of a film reel. People of the internet dissected this last scene for frame by frame to find out the markings were actually letters, and when you place them together, you get scariest thing I ever saw. It wasn't long after before people found the website scariestthingieversaw.com, which sent you to a terminal that was downloading a mysterious file. And that's where our story begins. For an entire year before Super 8 was even released, a story was forming on the internet, giving us hints of what the movie was going to be about, while also telling its own story. And since I've done this kind of thing before, I've decided to make this into a little series and explore different movie universes that you may have not been aware of. So sit back and be prepared, because we're now entering the universe of Super 8. The whole story is based around one man known as Josh Minka. He is the owner of the terminal we see on the Scariest Thing I Ever Saw website. He also owns a blog called Hookline and Minka, which is a website where he expresses his love for rare fish. I'm not joking. In one of the very first posts, he actually talks about how his obsession with rare fish came about. It was down to a book he stole from a library when he was only a young kid. It was a Classics Illustrated 5 Moby Dick. He really wanted this book, and he visited several different libraries before he found it. Josh would post on this website in his spare time, although it became increasingly harder as his job was requiring more hours of him in order to pay bills. Although, the new supervisor at work, Sarah, is apparently really nice. Josh seemed like your everyday guy with a hobby to say the least. That is until someone from his family's past started contacting him. I have proof. Stop posting publicly. I can answer your questions. On the scariest thing I ever saw website, a file started downloading. It was clearly sent to Josh, and he was downloading it to find out what it was. After it downloaded, you could print the files off, which turned out to be two pages of a newspaper from the 1970s. One side just had a bunch of different stories that happened on that particular day. The other page featured an ad for a brand known as Rocket Puppeteers, which included their mascot, Captain Coop Cooper. This was actually a fake brand that J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg created for a sponsorship with 7-Eleven. Rocket Puppeteers had its own website, where you could fill out a survey with questions about the brand, and not to mention, you could actually fill out the ad in the newspaper and send it off to the address that was listed in the corner. You would then receive a certificate in the post thanking you for filling it out. And not only that, during the San Diego Comic Con of 2010, a Rocket Puppeteer's truck appeared outside of it, and if you handed in your certificate, or at least sung the Rocket Puppeteer's theme tune, you would receive some free merchandise. The truck also had a Twitter account announcing where it would be at Comic-Con. Rocket Puppeteers had no importance to the main story, but was a fun thing placed on the side to win some merchandise and join in with some of its games. An actual cardboard cutout of the mascot Captain Coop Cooper can also be seen in one of the deleted scenes from the movie. Plus, the mascot Captain Coop Cooper was based off of a real astronaut, Gordon Cooper. He was involved in a few conspiracy theories surrounding UFOs, which actually ties into the movie and its AI. ARG. But going back to these two newspaper clippings, there was more than just an advertisement for Rocket Puppeteers. These stains that you can see on the Rocket Puppeteers ad were intentionally placed to pick out key words on the page opposite. Notice the X's marked on the first page as well as the second? Well, if you flip the first page and place it above the other, both X's match up perfectly. Plus, in this position, the smudges on page 1 actually pick out key words on page 2. When you place the words in order, you get this. No certainty if alive, maybe after us. We go underground. 
This was the first clue in the story, and more continued to arrive. All these files were being sent to the terminal, which is owned by Josh Minka, meaning someone was clearly reaching out to him. We then find more information in another window behind the pop-up screen on the terminal, which is a prompt that says, print all pages to default printer, OK or cancel. If you clicked OK, it prints out a conversation Josh Minka had with a mysterious person. We assume this is the one that's been sending all the files. I have proof. Stop posting publicly. I can answer your questions. See? I have the damn thing. What is it? I think something may have reactivated. Need to make sure we're still alone. Keep it hidden until further contact. I've been quiet. Please, what is this about? If you're who I think you are, it's about your father. I'll tell you more when I can, but you must take down those sales listings. Anything you found may be important. This is clearly mid-conversation, as it starts with, I have proof. But proof of what? He clearly posted a picture straight after, implying that this was the proof. If we enhance the image, you'll see in the corner a reflection of a woman's hat with a golden pin brooch, with a post-it note on it saying sold if you reverse the image because it's a reflection, implying that this hat was up for sale. Since the last message says take down those sales listings, we can assume that the hat was up for sale on some kind of website. If we examine the image even more, you'll see numbers on the box below the hat, 25801, which is a West Virginia zip code. People checked websites like Craigslist in that particular area to see if anything good came up. They found a direct match. Some guy, known as Josh, was selling it after his mother had passed away. He was also selling several other items that must have belonged to his parents. We know this because of a letter that was seen in the background of these images, along with a phone number. The answering machine was regarding the memorial service of Evelyn Minka, which we can assume was Josh's mother. Calling the number would lead you to this answering machine. Thanks everyone for your interest in the Evelyn Minka Memorial Fund. We're no longer able to keep accepting donations at this time, but if you still want to give, please contact Josh or a member of the Minker family for a list of Evelyn's favorite charities. Thanks again for your incredibly kind support. A few days later, the listings were removed from Craigslist, and the printable was updated with Josh trying to reach out to the mysterious man again. Okay, I took everything down. Who do you think I am? What do you know about my father? If you want to find your father, We'll have to be more careful. Meet me at 4D and 5O's last leg. Bring the foghorn and the unexpected title. This wasn't actually a location, but rather for a chat room that was on Scariest Thing I Ever Saw's website. You couldn't type anything yourself, but instead it prompted you to a read only, meaning you could read what was previously put in the chat. It was a conversation between Josh and the mystery man. Hello? Good. This is more secure. Who are you? I can help you find your father. He needs your help. That doesn't make sense. I've never met him. How do you know him? Is he in trouble or something? Those items you were asking about, the one your mother left you, some of them may have belonged to your father. They may be important. Important how? Tell me exactly what they are. That scrap of film from the canister? A picture of some guy is in front of a building? Looks like a hangar? And a metal cylinder with three dots on it? Is there anything inside the cylinder? No, it's empty. Why? Is that everything? I think so. Please look again. I believe he may have hidden something that will help us find him. I'll share more of what I have and maybe it will help you. The mystery man then started sending more files to Josh. They were all printables, which appeared to be copies of four ID cards from Nellis Air Force. All the faces had been removed, but what was interesting about these ID cards was that they all featured three dots under the authorization section, similar to what Josh described was on his father's cylinder, three dots, possibly meaning that one of these ID cards belonged to his father. Most likely, this one. This particular card stood out to Josh as he noticed the word T-R-O-G-L, written next to the photo. A few weeks went by and the printable was updated again, this time featuring a picture of an ad in a book with the same word, T-R-O-G-L, appearing in the top corner, followed by Josh's message. Okay, I found something. Nothing in my mother's things, but that badge reminded me. Check this out. I think some random book club sent it to me when I was a kid, but it's the same word, right? Even the handwriting looks the same. What, what the hell does it mean? Yes. 
This could be important. But you must stop using this account, same protocol. This was clearly the book mentioned on Josh's blog earlier. He found it through a book club that was sent to him. A few days went by and the mystery man tried to get in contact with Josh again through the chat room, but this time there was no answer. Before he left though, he promised to send Josh a picture of his father. Not too long after, the mystery man was true to his word and uploaded a picture of Josh's father. For people who have seen the movie will be very aware that this is the same person who caused the train crash in the movie. The mystery man heard nothing back from Josh. Even on his website, Hook, Line and Minka, there hadn't been any blog posts for some time. The mystery man tried once again in the chat and a few other places to see if he could get a response, but there was no answer from Josh. Nearly a month later, Hookline and Minka gets a blog post update. Sorry for the silence, just had some unexpected things come up. There was also a new chat that appeared. Hello? What happened? Where were you? Someone broke into my house. Was it you? Don't be foolish. Did they take anything or see anything we've discussed? No, I don't think so. I think I should call the police. This wasn't a robbery. Calling the police will make things worse for you. Whomever it was was looking for something. I don't think they saw the stuff on my computer. Like the picture you sent me. That was my dad, right? What about the book? Do you still have the book? No, answer me. Someone just broke into my house and I want answers. What was that picture you sent me? Your father was a biospeleologist. He was plucked to work on a project of great importance. For the government? Yes. What project? You wouldn't believe me. Try me. We found an important alternative energy source. It involved foreign matter, but it got out of control. Out of control how? My dad kept something in that empty cylinder, didn't he? Is that what they were after? I told you, we found an important alternative energy source. He must have hid it. Do you still have the book? Yeah. Upload the rest to me. We need to find out what your father kept in the cylinder. If we find it, we find him. After that, Josh received a file containing a map leading to Fergus Falls in the United States. We can see letters FFSH appearing on the map, which turns out stands for Fergus Falls State's Hospital. There was also a drawing in the top right corner. This was a drawing for the hospital's staircase. In this picture, you can see two windows and the stairs in the middle, indicating this was the right place. Josh decided to travel down to investigate. He found a letter from his father. The letter reads, Hopefully this has fallen into the right hands. If you are reading this, it means you have found each other. Wherever I am, I'm grateful to both of you for your willingness to help and trust me. I wish I could be there to explain in person, perhaps someday. It's been five days since we left the hospital. I'll try to leave as many breadcrumbs as I can, T-R-O-G-L and the rest. Use them. As of now, the Vetus Relic is safe. Safer in some places than others, but I'll have to rely on luck to keep it secure until absolutely necessary. It sounds as though the father was planning on having Josh and this mysterious man work together from the very beginning. And so all these clues the mystery man is sending through to Josh is what he received from Josh's father to help him find the Vetus Relic. Also, just something extra, if we take a look in the corner of the photo with the letter, you'll see one of the books was written by Dr. Leda Cooper. Searching the name on the internet will help you find another website for this game, Revelistic.com, which is an anagram for Vetus Relic, which is the object that was mentioned in the letter we just read out, indicating that this website is definitely connected to the story. This website specializes in posting conspiracy theories about Area 51. Even one of the theories was talking about Dr. Leda Cooper, which was how people found the website. It was very secretive on what was going on here, even the about page didn't have anything other than an email, although people later found out that the person running the website was Josh's new supervisor, Sarah. After that, everything went quiet for a while. The Revelistic website was still posting conspiracies, but nothing of importance. But then we got a new post on Josh's blog, but not by Josh. Sorry to hack this, but you weren't paying attention. Check email for credentials. BXTSLWK729. I know you just found where to use this. Explanation. It turns out the person who hacked his website was the person behind Revelistic.com. If we take the explanation from the post and add it to Revelistic.com, it takes you to another page on the website with a password. The password is BXTSLWK729. It took you to a section where Sarah and Josh finally had a conversation. I'm sorry I didn't want to hack your site, but I didn't know what else to do. 
I know you're mad, but please let me explain. She goes on to explain that she worked for a company that was filing strange information. I used to work at an oil company. I was a consultant, an engineer, several months ago. I found scanned copies of files in a locked directory. Lots of weird information, referencing projects nothing like what our company was developing. There are things in those files that I've never heard of. Materials that shouldn't exist. And in one of those files, I found your name. I didn't understand it. All I got was your name. I figured if I could find you, maybe you'd be a clue as to what the file meant. Why my company was involved. It turns out Sarah was the one that broke into Josh's house, as she's been spying on him this whole time. She tells Josh she only wants to help him. After much discussion, Josh decides to let Sarah in on what the mystery man has been saying to him. He also got in touch with the mystery man to let him know that Sarah was in on it too. He seemed okay with it, but it would have not been his advice, as he believes now he's only put Sarah in danger. Later, Josh found an old image of his father and a group of people who were possibly the ID badges that were sent earlier. There was also writing on the back of it. It seems like they were planning something. The boys and I are planning to infiltrate the compound in the morning. I had more of those visions in the hospital, like it was calling to me. Everyone there is in danger. This must be stopped. If tomorrow is a failure, you'll need the other piece. You'll need to charge the battery when you find it. It will probably be dead. Use the equation to set it to the right frequency. It all went silent after a while between Josh, Sarah, and the mystery man. However, there was a new website found to keep us entertained while we waited. It was the Super 8 editing room, which featured over 100 clips all placed together to create a three minute top secret film. These clips were hidden around the internet and were found after doing certain tasks or entering certain contests on the official Super 8 website. One of the clips was found on the game Portal 2. If you go to the extras page, it takes you to an interactive teaser trailer for Super 8. Once all clips were together, it appeared to be a top secret video created by Area 51 about an investigation of an alien spacecraft with Josh Minka's father. The following film collated from the experiments of Operation Belt Trap, along with the accompanying materials and exhibits within this parcel, is intended to fulfill two objectives. It appears scientists were conducted to research the alien spacecraft. This craft was made out of strange cubes. Upon examining them, the cubes reacted strangely, like nothing they'd seen before. Not only that, but in the video, Area 51 appeared to have the alien specimen contained somewhere in the facility. And one day, after trying to feed it, Josh Minka's father was caught by it. This was most likely what caused Josh's father to start a rebellion against the government. More of this was explained in the movie where he talks about a connection he got with the creature after it made contact. It was then not long after when the revelistic slash explanation site updated with a message from Josh sent to Sarah, basically saying that the mystery man had been caught. A package was sent to Josh with an image and a letter on the back. The letter read as this. He caught up to me. I hope I was able to buy you enough time to get away. Perhaps I should have told you this from the beginning, but I suspected that a man from your father's past had been following our movements. He was stationed with your father and me at Area 51. He is not a good man. I know he's after the Vetus relic and he cannot, under any circumstances, get to it first. It's far too powerful. I know what he wants to do with it, and that cannot happen. Not again. Please do not worry about me. I wouldn't have allowed myself to be taken alive. But know that my death was quick and painless. I've had lots of years to plan for this outcome. Help your father. You're all he has. Your friend, Alexander. After a certain amount of grieving, Sarah and Josh decide to continue the story alone. After following the rest of the clues, it turns out the man who was following Josh had caught up to him too. Sarah was shortly kidnapped afterwards. After Josh sent another message on the Revelistic Explanation site, he got this response from it. You won't see her again unless you meet me at Southwestern Ohio coordinates now. Bring everything. If anyone follows you, she's gone. The next day, a printout appears on the scariest thing I ever saw.com. This time with one last message from Josh to the mystery man. 
I don't know why I'm writing this to you. I don't really know what happened. I guess I'm hoping you're not really gone. Maybe you'll never see this, but just in case, you should know that man was hunting us won't be bothering us anymore. He's dead. I don't really know how it happened. There was this flash of light, this energy. He was killed instantly. Sarah's fine, thankfully. A little bruised up, but very brave. She's staying with me until she's back on her feet. I'm guessing you always knew this, but the last map piece was a cube, not my dad. Don't worry about the cube. I'm going to keep it safe, where no one else will find it. I'm guessing that's what my dad wanted of me all along. Goodbye. I never got the chance to say that. But that's not all of the story. There's one last piece. Notice the number 1912 that appeared at the top on this printout. Well, people entered 1912 into the command window on the Scariest Thing I Ever Saw website, and you got one last message from the Mystery Man, which was obviously pre-written before his death. He tells us that Josh's dad was buried in Lillian, Ohio, behind the tool shed. Josh visits the site and finds a letter. It was to Josh from his father, explaining how he wishes he could have been more than just a letter. But because of the government experiments, it caused him to go on the run after he made contact with the creature. He moved from town to town, changing his name in order to not put his family in danger. The letter actually ends mid-conversation, where he's about to go in depth on what the creature wants. But to my knowledge, we never saw any more of this letter, other than this image. However, what the creature wants was explained in the movie, so thankfully all the loose ends were tied up. After this story had finished, the film was released, and we saw what happened to Josh's father, with a few large references to the ARG. Also, I want to address one last thing that people have been asking me about this movie. Is the movie Super 8 connected to the Cloverfield universe. It is rather interesting to think about. Both movies are created by Bad Robot and Paramount Pictures, including J.J. Abrams being a part of it. There are Easter eggs that we see in this movie that can also be found in Cloverfield. It also had a big viral marketing campaign that I just recapped. Plus, Sarah mentions she worked for an oil company that's been doing some suspicious behavior that could be relating to aliens, very similar to Tagarato in in Cloverfield. Also, the Rocket Puppeteer's truck is very similar to the Slusho truck that also went round San Diego Comic Con, but only just last year. There are a lot of similarities to this world. Unfortunately, J.J. Abrams has said publicly that the two movies are not connected. Hey guys, this is Future Jamie here. I just thought I'd actually say that um, uh, this was written and recorded before Cloverfield Paradox came out, and it's been pretty much confirmed that all the um, all the movies take place in a different reality. So this basically proves that Super 8 does take place in the Cloverfield franchise, pretty much just like every other bad robot movie. Or it's 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 pretty much heavily hinted that J.J. Abrams could very well do that. So, yeah, there's not really much more to say to that. That brings it to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more if you haven't already. Or you can join my Patreon to help me out over there. There's a couple of Patreons already joined which will have their beautiful names at the side of th this video at the end screen here. Um, thank you to everyone who has donated so far, really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Stay safe, and don't pull a pickguard.